Hi everyone, it's 314 Reactor here. Today we're going to be looking at Unreal Tournament 3 with ray tracing using Reshade and Marty McFly's RTGI shader. So in the link down below you'll find links to the Reshade latest version, to the QUINT files that are needed for this as well, as well as a link on how you can get the RTGI shader from Marty McFly. You do need to sign up to their Patreon and then you'll be allowed access to their Discord where you can download the latest version of the RTGI shader. So once you've got Reshade downloaded, go to Reshade Setup 461 here, which is the latest version as of the 30th of April 2020. Hit Run. Click here to manage the game and its installation. Click Browse. You want to go to the Unreal Tournament 3 folder. Mine is under Steam, Binaries, and then UT3.exe. Click on that. Hit Open, and then click DirectX 9, and then you'll be able to install it. Mine says Update there because I've already got it installed. Once you've clicked on that you'll be able to uh, select what shaders you want to install. I generally check as many as possible. And then once that's installed, you can go into the folder, into binaries again, and you'll see a new reshade-shaders folder. I just double click on that. And then what you want to do is to get the QUINT master.zip, open that up, and you want to drag across the shaders folder into there and just replace whatever's in there. There'll probably be nothing to replace for you, it's just I've already got it installed in here. And then you want to go to the latest Reshade GI Beta, and then do the same there, drag textures and shaders over. And then there's also QUINT dither.fx file, which can also be found on the My McFly Patreon Discord. Uh, drag that into shaders, and there we go. There's also one other thing that I realize needs to be applied for this. And you'll want to use something like NVIDIA Profile Inspector, which I'll also link down below. Equivalent isn't necessary for AMD because I believe this effect is only through NVIDIA. So you want to go to here, Unreal Tournament 3. And what I realized is that the ambient occlusion usage under the NVIDIA default setting is enabled. So it'll be giving ambient occlusion through the drivers. What we want to do is disable this because we're going to be using the ray tracing global illumination to do the ambient occlusion shading. So you want to make sure that the ambient occlusion setting is off. So you want the usage disabled and the ambient occlusion setting to off. Hit apply and then we can start up the game. Alrighty, so here we are at the main menu. This may look a bit different from what you know because I'm using something called Map Mixer 3 which is basically a UI update that makes launching the sessions and generally using the game a lot easier. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Gateway and then we're going to go to Rules. I'm going to make sure the bots are set to zero. Let's rock and roll. Alrighty, so when you're in game, just hit Home and that'll bring up the Reshade main menu here. First, it will give you a tutorial that you can go through, but you can skip that if you want. And then it's just a case of finding the RTGI shader. And you can do that by going to Search, typing in RT, and it should be in this list. There you go, RT Global Illumination. Tick that on. And you may see the gun there changed a little bit in terms of shading. What I've noticed is, if we look at the light channel, is that in game, it will only affect the gun at first. You can see the effects working on it there. Of course, we want it operating on the scenery more than anything else. So I found you have to go to the Direct X 9 tab here and tick Copy Depth Buffers Before Clear Operation. And then the scenery then becomes affected by the ray tracing. Unfortunately, the weapon at this point does not become affected and some of these effects will go through the weapon so it will look like the gun is invisible, which sucks a little bit, but it doesn't ruin the whole thing. I haven't found a way around this. I've tried messing around with pre-processor settings and I've not been able to find a way around it. So if we flick back to normal, you can see the gun looks like it's kind of see-through there, but it's not a uh, deal breaker. Let's flick over to that lighting channel. So lots of extra depth and color there. Unfortunately, you have a bit of the rocket launcher reflecting down there, which is strange, but again, not too bad. So let's first of all, let's turn the fade out end up to max so that the effect will go to the distance. I want to turn off render in half resolution. That should make things a little bit better looking, but it will have a slight cost on performance. So yeah, 72 frames a second there. So usually with the original Unreal Tournament, I crank the bounce lighting up very, very high. But in this one, if you do that too high, it goes crazy because there's obviously a lot more lighting. Enable precise light spreading. You want to make sure that's on because with it off, you see you lose a hell of a lot of detail. So you want to make sure that is on. Although if you disable that and go to statistics, you'll see uh, it doesn't actually affect the frame rate too much. So there we are. You can see the settings on because the gun looks kind of see-through. Let's turn it off. So you can see the main things there. Let's turn it back on. 
can see the main things there are a lot more extra shading beneath the plants around this area, through the rocks, etc. It's actually quite a strong effect. So what I might do is turn the ambient occlusion down a bit. Probably a bit too strong. Let's put it at 2.5. Pump that bounce light intensity up to 6. And let's flick back to normal. So that's for the effect on. And then off. And then on again. So yeah, that adds a whole bunch of extra shadowing detail. In fact, that lighting might be a bit too intense. Let's be bounce light intensity back to four. Still see there's a lot of uh, global illumination, light bouncing, colors. See the nice lighting and shadowing effects coming from these pickups here. Do the effect on. And then we turn it off. Yeah, that color completely goes from the ground there. Look, you see the red shading, the shadowing just below it. And also you can see that glow as well coming from it. When the items glow, you see the reflection in the ground there. Let's head into the snow area. So again, this has had a really nice effect on like the ice and snow and stuff. That's with it on. And if we turn it off, it loses a hell of a lot of that effect. See what I mean? So we turn it back on. It kind of looks like that blue sort of glow is going through the ice there. Really nice. Seems to be certain surfaces as well that the effect goes through. Let's turn it off. Yeah, see that ice there? That little bit of snow there? The effect is just going right through that as well. So here it is with the effect on. And then the effect off. So yeah, the settings for that are maxed out ray length, ray amount I've left at default, ray step amount is at 20, I've turned off render and half resolution, enabled precise light spreading, set the ambient occlusion intensity to 2.5, and set the bounce light intensity to 3.5, and I've got the fade out at 0 and the fade end at 1. If anyone knows about the uh, see-through weapon there, and if that's fixable, please do let me know. So, something I have noticed is that the ray length isn't necessarily a more is better affair. So if we have a look at the lighting channel here, and we have a look at the ray length, if we put it up to 20, kind of starts to overblow the effect. Whereas if we turn it down a little bit, kind of brings those effects a bit more to the forefront. So we turn down to 14. We're seeing a lot more stronger effect there and there as well, and from that glow. But then we crank up to 20, it's kind of blown out a little bit, and then really too low, it's nothing. So I think it's kind of a happy medium. I think around about 12 looks pretty good. I think that might be what it defaults at. But you see now there's a lot more of a active effect coming from this health vial that's spinning around. And then if we go back to the non-lighting channel, you can see the effect is a lot more noticeable as it's spinning around there. And if we turn the effect off overall, completely gone, and then back on, really nice effect. So let's fire up another level now that we've tweaked that a little bit. Okay, so let's go for a bit of heat ray physics. See, I love this map because it has the really, really awesome, obviously, physics effects on it, like the rain and uh, I think hail comes down in a bit. There we go. Love it. And of course, the ASMB shock rifle effect is amazing because it does this. So you've got the uh, little ambient occlusion shadows from all the particles falling down. Got some nice lighting coming from the shock rifle there. So you've got a lot of extra detail being added here. Flick back to the normal channel. So let's check out this spot with the ray tracing on. And then the ray tracing off. Oh. oh wow. So yeah, you can see the extra depth added there. The shadowing under that grate there. Some of the uh, the garbage in the corners there. 
That distant archway there. And of course you've got the extra lighting effect from the health pack spinning around here. And this gun spinning around here as well. You can see the shadowing effect there. Like in the, uh, the corner there and the corner there. Just turn it off. Completely gone. Looks totally flat. Turn it back on. Underneath the bins have shadows. There's lighting bouncing off of that and it's lighting up the side of the bin. The shadows spinning around nicely. Really, really nice effect there. Really adds a lot of depth. Bit of a small map though, so we'll switch up to another one. Let's check out some Shangri-La. Let's have a look out over here. This is with the RT on. And then the RT off. Let's check out what's happening on the lighting channel. Again, just look at that shadowing as that gun spins around. So nice. Through here. The extra depth added in there. The colour and like shadowing from that little lamp in the corner. So I use the lighting channel a lot just to give a really good example of what's going on. So I think with a lower ray length we can play around with this bounce light intensity setting more. So let's put it up to 6 for now and see how that looks to so check out the lighting channel. Oh yeah, so we've got a lot more, a lot more going on with the light here. That power up there. The light reflecting off the gun with the shadowing behind it. Oh, look at that shadowing there from the uh, the pillars. Really, really nice. Let's get this inside area here. RT on. And then the RT off. Oh, wow, yeah. That certainly makes a difference. And back on. The way the lighting blends there, and the way the shadowing comes up above that beam and around those lights. And the way the shadowing more realistically bounces around in those corners. Get a nice glowing effect from the pickups again. So let's find another level to check out. Ooh. Ooh, let's have a look at Omicron Dawn. Let's have a look at the flag. So in Unreal Tournament, when I'm running RTGI, the flag has a really nice effect to it. Looks like it still has that here. You can see as it's waving around the light affected on the floor there with the shading. And bounce lighting off of that. And you turn the RT off. Completely gone. And then back on. Really nice. Here we are on the actual outside of the station. Reminds me of the Fortress of Doom a little bit. Let's get a nice shot here. Let's turn the RT off. Oh yeah. Back on. And this distant bit out here with the broken moon. RT off. And then back on. Let's check out a vehicle CTF map. Okay, so here we are on Necropolis. Now this has some really interesting lying effects on it. So this should be very, very nice. So this is with the effect on. I think you can see quite a lot of ambient occlusion there through the buildings and the distance and the foreground, extra shadowing and the light glowing. Let's switch it off. Yeah, again, completely flat. You see the like color blending in the, the windows area down the left there? When I switch it off, it looks a lot more artificial. Like even the textures look more artificial. Like it looks less like glass. When you turn it back on, it looks a lot more natural. Blends a lot more naturally, that light and shadowing. So let's check out this area. RT on, and then let's switch that off. Oh, wow, well, yeah. That looks a lot better. At least in my opinion. I imagine some people may want to tweak it, but... I think that looks really nice. Because it just adds in that glow from the light that you'd expect in real life. And blends the existing shadowing and lighting in a much more natural way, especially over the right there. The way that shadowing kicks in and mixes more with the light. So I've loaded back up into spectator mode here. As you can see in spectator mode, it works just as fine as it does normally. 
It's still the weird issue with the gun when you load in, but it's not like Unreal Tournament 2004 where I could only get it to work on the gun when actually playing the game and couldn't actually get it to affect the environment in game only in spectator mode. Because this just looks really nice here. Plus the RT on. And then we flick the RT off. Again, that, sh that the lighting and shadowing looks so unnatural with it off. Just look at that in the distance there as well. It's like something out of Riddick. Awesome. I think that may just be my thumbnail. Although you already know that by now. So that's for the RT on. And the RT off. And that distance uh, left part there, when you switch the RT on, you see an entire shadow gets added behind that building there, just in the distance. Alright, so let's check out one last level, and that's going to be Suspense Necris. So here we are in Suspense the Necris version. Turn the RT off. And back on. Let's check out this area down here. It's the RT on. And the RT off. There's lots of extra shading around those uh, two parts of the bridge there. A bit more subtle than I expected because I think it's less of a well lit map. But the ambient occlusion certainly makes a difference. You can see when we turn it off, it looks a lot more flatter. Then we turn it on. There's also more of a green glow as well. It's because that ambient occlusion bouncing that line around. Wonder what it looks like on normal suspense. Here we are on normal suspense, and whoa, that looks pretty bright. Let's uh, turn the RT off there. That's a pretty bright map anyway, so. Yeah, just adds in that extra bounce lighting. A lot of extra shadowing and shading. You have to remember this is when like Bloom and HDR was like brand new, so they uh Devs like to go a bit crazy with it and really crank up the bloom to overdrive. Because it was a new effect. Same with Oblivion as well. Is this with the RT off? Let's switch the RT on. Oh yes, like I said, really adds that depth to the scene, all that extra shadowing. Again, let's look at the lighting channel. Yep, that's a lot of detail, especially in that part. And it includes that line just as you'd expect. Just looks so nice. I still love this glowing effect on the uh, pickups here. Do one last test, see how affected the lighting is by the weapons. Let's do a constant fire. And turn the RT off. Oh wow. Yeah, so there's basically no lighting coming from that normally. But when you switch the RT on. Yeah, that's a lot of extra lighting. Especially from the stinger there, you can see on the uh the walls. Lit up really nicely. A nice occluded shadow there from the light as well. So I think that looks pretty amazing. It could do with a, a little bit more tweaking, just to get some of those effects toned down a bit, get them a bit more under control. So that was Mike McFly's Ray Tracing Global Illumination Shader on Reshade running on Unreal Tournament 3 from 2007. So if you have any issues getting it set up with the instructions I've given, please do feel free to leave a comment and I'll try and help you out. All the links should be in the description. Stay calm and play Unreal Tournament 3 with Reshade. Hope you're all staying safe. Please do like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.